sunshine <laughs> is a welcome change for area farmers. With all of this rain, it's become almost impossible for area farmers to plant important crops. Experts say corn and soybeans are typically planted in early May, but the wet soil has prevented farmers from getting into the fields. Yeah, not good. And then with all the news affecting agriculture, we thought it would be a perfect time to talk to Q106 Farm Director Pam Yaki. Good to see you live and in color. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Get taller furniture. I mean, my, <laughs> either that or put a green screen from here on down and do whatever. <laughs> 270. Yes, 270 9933 if you have a question for Pam. How critical are we here? Well, let's put it this way, kids. The only healthy crop are the orange cones in construction around <laughs> oh, Wisconsin boy. right now. Because we have not got a region anywhere in the state that's really ahead of normal as far as planting is concerned for corn or beans. As of Monday, about 65% of our corn in the ground, about 30% of our beans were planted, and both those numbers are off our five-year average. Wouldn't be so bad if we had a few days worth of dry weather coming up, uh, but now, as you heard from Karin, we've compounded the problem with just these little showers. Little showers, they sound so innocent, mm -hmm. but if you're working with saturated soil already, you're out of luck because we need just pure dry days, and now it's compounding our alfalfa problem Alfalfa is a major feed for our Wisconsin dairy industry. You can't cut it because it would float along literally the top of the fields. So we're in a, a real tough spot for a lot of things. And you guys were asking me a little mm -hmm. bit about uh, the vegetable crops. We did a radio story today with uh, vegetable, potato and vegetable growers. Potato crop is in the ground in uh, the Stevens Point mm -hmm. Central Sands area. But the soils are still so wet that if those potatoes remain in the ground without drier conditions, we're going to likely lose some of our potato acres. Now, you can replant those because they're a shorter season crop, but the rest of our crops, our sweet corn, our sweet peas, our green beans, our carrots, our onions, they're all going to be delayed. Now then, you have to ask, well, how long are we going to need? Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. where's Karn? Where's Gary? Ask mm -hmm. him when the first frost is going to be because that's... That's oh the end boy. there. So we're going to see these prices go up at the grocery store eventually? Well, I, I don't want to start stoking that fire just yet. I try to be a firm believer that Wisconsin farmers can get a lot done in a short period of time if the weather turns correct. And by the time we get to August, this may be nothing mm -hmm. but a distant memory. Yep. We'll Let's just have hope, to wait right? and see. Oh, for sure, for okay. sure. All right, let's go to the phones. We'll start with Mary here in Madison. Hi, Mary. Hello. I wanted to tell Sam what a good job she does reporting the farm news. <laughs> For us that have grown up on a farm, that's, she's about the only one that can really fill us in on things, and it means so much, and thank you, Pam. My pleasure. I love it. Thank you very much, Mary. I appreciate that. Your sister sounds just like you. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, good I've been one. working with these people too. Uh, <laughs> we have another Hello, Mary, Mary from Madison. Mm -hmm. Hello, Mary. Hi. Um, well, on your market reports, you talk about block and barrel cheese. Sure. What is the difference between them, and do they have flavors like cheddar, brick, mozzarella? Basically all cheddar. The reason that we use those uh, denominations, Mary, block, and barrel, B-A-R-R-E-L, is because that is uh, the, how the federal government basically is uh, keeping track of some of the cheeses that go into like our school lunch menus, things like that. Uh, so the barrel is obviously a little bit bigger increment of cheddar cheese. Block is 40 pounds, and again, a lot of it uh, has to go with our cheese producers, and if they're putting it into storage or if they're going to be using it as far as shredding. So two different uh, denominations as far as the size of the cheese. Barrel bigger, 40-pound block smaller. You'll want to watch the 40-pound block cheese uh, for Wisconsin. That's a good indicator of what direction our milk prices and are going. Barrow's a pig term, isn't it? Barrow. Barrow. B-A-R-R-O-W. I wish I had a chalkboard for Mr. Kane here. Yes, that's a hog. That <laughs> is a, that I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, yep, I got it. I got it. Barrow is a, uh, used to be male pig. Oh. Okay. okay. All right. I, I might need to sit Thank in you. between you Thank two. You. Okay, now we have Steve from Madison's. Hello, Steve. Good afternoon. I have a quick question. Um, some local Wisconsin farmers recently lost their mail contracts because of some dispute with Canada. Right. And what I'd like to know is, I understand some of it's been resolved, so could Pam maybe comment on that? Sure. That's a big story. I appreciate that. Yeah, that was obviously mm -hmm. one of the biggest stories that I worked with. And it's been about a month, Steve, since we were right on the precipice of trying to figure out what was going to happen to more than 50 of our Wisconsin dairy farms that had until May 1st to find a new home for their milk. Uh, Canada changed their pricing policy. Uh, that discontinued a contract with one of our milk producers, and that's what led to it all. As of uh, the 1st of May, 99% of our dairies did find new homes. There were, I believe, four dairies that did not find a new 
uh, procurement area, and that was because of quality-related issues, as I've been told. Uh, the Wisconsin Farm Center hotline, which was our information hub, trying to keep those farms connected, handled more than 478 calls in the month of April. That is at least double what they'd normally have done in the month of April, and that wasn't the only issue they were dealing with. They were dealing with farmers that had to have uh, some help with maybe financing for spring inputs, uh, some succession transition planning that was going on. But 478 calls that they could track, they answered from dairy farms that were impacted by that particular uh, situation. So, you know, the good news is 99% of those dairies found a new home mm -hmm. for the milk. But you should also know, as uh, people that love Wisconsin agriculture, those dairy farms renegotiated with new milk uh, processors, but they didn't get the price that they had originally. So mm. yeah, there, yeah. there's more there's more coming out as the you know we get farther away from yeah. the situation. Things that we learn, things that we'll want to change. Yeah. Important okay. time of the year. We have to remember how important agriculture is to this state. See yep. me at the day, uh, Green County Fair or Green mm -hmm. County Dairy Breakfast on Saturday. Oh, it's Cows the on the concourse on the third. Mm -hmm. Dane County Dairy Breakfast in Middleton at uh, uh, Blue Star Dairy on the tenth. Farm Babe will be there. Dairy Month's a busy time for the Farm Babe. Oh, my That's goodness. All right. That's all right. Thanks, hey, everyone, for calling you. in. You guys, too. Thanks for having we'll me. See you tomorrow. Yeah, you will. Okay.